Welcome to VTeach. So last class we stopped at uh, the types of diagrams. Today's class we will continue from there and uh, the question comes back, what is illegal UML? As we said, this uh, UML is uh, accepted by OMG developers. But what happens if someone comes up with a new one? Yes, OMG tends to give you that liberty to uh, denote such uh, uh, notations, such conventions in your programming language. Yes, they are accepted. But uh, what about the natural language uh, representation for uh, representation in uh, UML? Yes, the same thing holds. So UML gives you that liberty. So which is called as a legal UML. So why do we call it as legal? Because that is accepted by OMG. Please remember that no single UML is enough. No single UML model is enough. So we should have more. Yes, everything can be refined. Nothing can be said as right or wrong other than notational representations of uh, UML. So bringing in uh, the architecture. So UML does have some architecture defined within it. It is not vague that we start drawing some diagrams. No, not like that. So what, what level of abstraction should a diagram be drawn is all explained in UML. So how do we start that? That is what an architecture stands for. Architecture refers to the uh, different perspectives at which a complex system can be can be developed. So when I look at a problem domain, I need to understand that this is how I am I'm supposed to solve it. So if uh, you tend to solve the same problem, you may look at it in a different way. So that is what a perspective is added. So yes, UML helps us to render those perspectives individually. So how do we do that? A software architecture as is uh, very intensive, the UML architecture is also intensive in nature. They can be developed by using five different views. Uh, label one, each one at a time. There is a use case view. There is a design view. There is a process view. There is an implementation view and a deployment view. A use case view is, uh, is a system that is seen as seen by the users, analysts and testers. So uh, how does a system look with the perspective of the user? can be rendered by using a use case view. But what happens if uh, you add uh, more detail into your view? You would like to add more detail into the view. Then there comes the design view where you can render those thoughts, the user thoughts into uh, classes and their interfaces, collaborations, all that. So when you render, use all of them together, we will start calling it as a design view. And there is a process view where you tend to put in the active classes where they start um, um, executing the parts. So when uh, doing that, along with the threads, the active threads that we tend to use uh, is called as a process view. And there comes uh, an implementation view where all those um, the process views can be combined together to generate physical existing files. Those uh, representations are called as implementation view. And there is a deployment view. Which file should be kept at which location? Geographically, physically, where should I keep them? Which node should they exist? All that is part of deployment view. So a deployment view and an impl implementation view comes into account, you know, when a solution has been, you know, a problem domain has been solved. So all these five together are called as architecture of UML. So if you just look at how they are combinedly represented, so they are relating one with the other one. So it's not that each view stands alone. Yes, a view can be combined with another view to render more meaning to it. Like a use case view usually tends to be the most simplest, simplest of all because there is where the requirement analysis starts gathering. The user gives his requirements. The tester, the analyst tries to analyze them, put it into a form. All that is called as a use case view. So when you render that use case view, it can be combined when you render that use case view it can be combined with the other views like a design view an implementation view or a process view or a deployment view when you elaborate a use case view your your behavior along with uh, functionalities and vocabularies then comes the aspect of a design view and a use case view combining together so a vocabulary defining what each one stands for its functionalities all that is uh, what a 
design view does. But when I use case view, the behaviors are rendered with system configurations and uh, management configurations. Then, uh, then comes uh, the implementation view because this is a part where you know an implementation part uh, comes into account only when you are able to solve the problem. A problem domain has been resolved. There is a process view, a use case view, and a process view combined together. When uh, the behaviors are uh, uh, measured in terms of uh, their performance, their scalability, their throughput, yes, there is where a process view comes into account. Then the, there comes a deployment view where your all behaviors are rendered physically somewhere, located somewhere. Where are they according to a topology, distribution, delivery, installation, product time, planning, everything. All that comes into your deployment view. It's not that uh, uh, we don't need uh, all views for a, uh, for a project. No. Yes, all, all views may be applicable for very, very complex uh, problem domains. But simpler problem domains can be solved by using one or two perspectives, one or two views. No need to render all uh, views. As in the case of a system uh, development, there is a software life cycle for it. A same, same is the case with uh, UML model also where applies a software development life cycle. So how do I uh, render a software development life cycle for this? There are three aspects of representing them. One is a use case driven. Two is an architecture centric and three is interactive and uh, iterative and incremental. So one is a use case driven, two is an arch architecture centric and three is iterative and uh, incremental. So how do I call them? How do I render them? So there is a simple uh, diagram here. There are fa four phases of uh, um, a problem domain being evolving from one to the other one. So how do I do that? So how do I do that? So please remember these words. There is an inception phase, there is an elaboration phase, there is a construction phase and there is a transition phase. Inception phase is a phase where you start your problem domain. You start attacking your problem domain. What are the requirements? What is the user expecting us? Why are we trying to do this? What for are we trying to do this? Is what an inception uh, phase uh, talks about. What is there in the inception phase? You can see there is requirements being started being collecting from the user and two, there is a business model being defined for it. Is it really practical? Can we do that? Can we do this? Yes, a business model being uh, indicated there and comes uh, an inception phase leads you into the elaboration phase An elaboration phase is a second phase. So where in the elaboration phase you as you start collecting all the requirements, you start posing on each requirement and try to understand how it can be solved by using a method, a model, a design over those requirements. All that is done in elaboration phase. So what do you see in an elaboration phase? An elaboration phase is the second phase in the software development life cycle where you tend to realize whether a requirement can be rendered in a problem domain or not, can be solved in a problem domain or not. That is what is found out in elaboration model. So you see that analysis and design has lot of importance in elaboration. So I am trying to analyze I am trying to design the requirements that the user gave us. So that is what is happening in the elaborative, elaborative phase, the second phase, which leads us as you complete the elaborative phase, you are uh, pushing to the third phase, which is called as a construction phase. Yes, the term itself is telling you this is where we try to construct the model. This is where we uh, try to construct the product. So what is there? You see, an implementation is high in construction phase. Implementation is high in construction phase. And from construction, we move on to the transition phase where we try to face the uh, real world, where our product tries to face the real world with the help of, you know, uh, a deployment. Yes, it is rendered at certain location. It is given to a user, customer. He tends to, you know, um, approve of it whether it can be you know, of use or not. Certain times in the transition phase, there are products where they tend to fail and they are no more found in the real world. So they are gone. So most of the SDLC products fail at a transition phase. So you can see there are a number of iterations being used at each phase. It's not that I can do a phase in one iteration, no. 
every phase can be done in iterative manner. So you can go on doing it. So a model that you design is not the final model. You can refine that model. So when you re when you start refining that model, a refinement needs more requirements efficiency more uh, effectiveness into that brings effectiveness into your system so an iterative model is what is our stlc here so please remember these four words inception elaboration construction and transition so we'll stop here thank you see you in the next class